Fishing has officially made its way into LEGO Fortnite, and I've been really enjoying this, but what good is it without an awesome fishing setup? So today I'm gonna walk you through how to build this amazing fishing pier that comes stocked with two full gazebos to where you can put your food processors, your grills, your juicers, and storage, as well as a crafting bench for all of the essentials to run an awesome fishing operation. And I do wanna to mention too, this thing's so badass that both Turk and Bob, which the new fishing villagers that came with this update, have already made their way here and found a place to stay. So let's not waste any more time. Let me show you how to build this thing. All right, so to get this thing started, we're gonna go into our building parts under stairs and we're gonna grab this rustic stair one. We're gonna go and place down four of these things. You can snap them in easily by just aiming your little pointer towards the bottom corner there. And then we're gonna move into these rustic wide floor twos in which we're gonna snap in. It's only gonna be two wide. So snap those in and then proceed to Build these across the entire lake or wherever you're building this. Just build them till you reach the other side. Now, once you've reached the other side, you can go in and grab these same exact stairs and snap them into your floors. You're gonna do the same thing here. Now, if you have a little gap like this, don't worry about it because it's gonna allow you to snap these and they're gonna bury right into the floor there. That way you don't have any silly gaps in your stairs. All right, what I'm showing you here, you're gonna to wanna to build across the entire length of your bridge. This is gonna help you build these supports as you're over top of the water here. Without this, this is gonna take forever to build, so make sure you do that. All right, so now that we got the floor down to help us build over the water, I just wanna point out, before we put in these beam walls, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it's lined up with your floor and not flush with the stairs like this. This is important because these are the exact same width as the floor pieces that we put down. And in order for this to evenly run all the way across, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have a tiny little gap like this. You can even come underneath the underside and see that it's lined up with the floor and not this first plank of the stairs there. So make sure that that's lined up like that before you begin adding the rest of the pieces. Now that you're good and lined up, you can just snap these in on the bottom here. It does take a little bit of patience because as you're moving along, sometimes they snap on top and it can be a pain, but you'll get in a rhythm. Just make sure they're all touching each other as you're making your way across the bridge. And then you can do the exact same thing on the opposite side once you've got this side finished. Now that our beam walls are in on both sides, we're gonna grab this rustic beam four and snap it into the bottom of the walls. You're gonna repeat this on both sides and make sure it spans across the entire pier. I know I say this a lot in my build tutorials, but pay very close attention to this part because it's a little bit tricky. So we're gonna take this umber wall and line it up with the center of our beam wall. And we're gonna rise it up just to where that little notch you see lines up with our floor. Once you've got that lined up, go ahead and snap it in. To make sure that our umber wall supports are gonna be even across the board, you're gonna snap another one into itself and shift it over six spaces. Now you can make sure your spacing is good by dropping another post down and that is just covering the outside of the beam wall. Now from here, all you need to do is snap it in and notch it over 14 spaces, which is gonna put you perfectly center between both of your beam walls. And then again, drop another one down to just make sure that it's perfectly spaced out. Once you've got these placed, you're gonna knock down the center one. That was only used as an anchor point to get our spacing and evenness here. All right, so in effort to save you all some time, I wanted to talk a little bit about doing this before you put your posts all the way across like you're seeing here. So if you look up, this one is missing it, but on this one to the left, there's these supports that I put underneath. That's where your railings are gonna sit. Before you move forward, make sure that you have the correct spacing and you can test that out by coming to your support beams and taking this rustic beam two, and we're gonna fit this right in the middle and snap that in. And then take a rustic beam one and snap that. It should fill out that entire space and fit perfectly. If you've got that down, now you know for a fact that your spacing is good. Again, from this post to the next is gonna be 14 spaces. That'll get you that perfect space. And then you can see that our railings that we'll go over here in a minute and that pattern sit right on top of this beam here. 
Also, you're gonna wanna make sure that these are absolutely flush with your floor here. Now that your spacing's worked out and those things fit perfectly between, now you're just gonna continue to snap and space over 14 spaces for every single umber wall support that you're gonna drop down. Now we're gonna repeat this process on both sides. This one does take a little bit of time, so just remain patient. Make sure again to check your spacing before you go and build the entire thing out. I actually had a situation where I messed up two spacings all the way across and I had to start all over. Once you have your deck post evenly spaced 14 spaces on both sides, now we're gonna come back through and start snapping these in and get them to go down as far into the water as we can so it looks very realistic and sturdy. So another reason why I had you check your spacing with Rustic Beam 2 and 1 and get it flush with the floor first is now you're set up to just snap these in from the first one you set down and notch over eight spaces and just place them in across the entire bridge. Once you have them complete, then you can grab your rustic beam ones, snap those to the other beams you just put in and repeat this exact same pattern on the opposite side between your posts. Now our top beams are in, it's time to place down our plank railing. I'm using plank railing two and one, and the pattern I chose is doing a two, followed by one, then one, then two. The reason I'm doing this is because it creates a nice even pattern across your entire pier, and in my opinion, looks the best. All right, so the pier portion is done, but if you look off to the left here, I know I'm panning to the right, sorry about that. There's this gazebo. Now this is going to be the next step of this build, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it but we can put our food processors in here, the juicer, the grill, and we also have a crafting bench for our fishing poles. This is gonna be necessary to run a complete fishing operation. So let's talk about that build. All right, so in order to create the gazebo opening like you're seeing there, you're gonna find a spot on your pier where you want to build the gazebo itself. Now I did this directly in the center and I did that by counting my posts. So all you need to do is knock out the center posts and then two sets of these fences on either side. This is gonna create the opening for you. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure you knock off those little support beams as well so you can attach your floors. All right, so we're gonna start building the gazebo floor. And the first thing we're gonna grab is this rustic wide floor too. We're gonna to snap that in and nudge it over so it's flush with our post. Then we're gonna send a second one on there. And then we're gonna grab the rustic thin floor four and cap it off on the end there. Then we're gonna to move to the other side where we're going to grab the rustic wide floor one. And we're gonna snap this in as well. Snap a second one in, and then now we're gonna move into the rustic, uh, what is it, rustic floor three. We're gonna snap one in right here, and then another on the outside. And then we can grab these rustic floor ones and cap off the ends. And then we're gonna move back to rustic thin floor, not four here, but three, and make that nice and even. Now we can grab rustic thin floor four, then a rustic thin floor three. And last, we're gonna do, you don't wanna do two, it's gonna be rustic thin floor one. Now it's time to extend this off to the right and left. So we're gonna start by grabbing rustic wide floor threes, and we're gonna snap them in, make sure they're flush with the posts. Then we'll be grabbing rustic thin floor, or I'm sorry, rustic floor threes, just like that. And then to finish off the corners, we're grabbing rustic floor one. Next, we're gonna put down some stairs because these are gonna put us in the best position to line up these beams we're gonna put on the side of the floors here. But we're gonna start with rustic beam four and you're just gonna to have to maneuver this around a bit to make sure that it's lined up flush with your floor and then make sure it's touching the supports just behind it. Now, once you have the first one in, the rest of it's pretty easy because you can just snap in from here. To continue this, all you need to do is snap into the existing piece, flip it once, and then nudge it over till it's lined up. And then if you kick it back one, you can place it on there. From here, you're just gonna snap these rustic beams in until we get towards the end. 
Now we're gonna switch over to rustic beam two and then finish off the front side. To finish off the right side, we're gonna go back to rustic beam four. We're gonna snap it in place, flip it, slide it over just like we did before, kick it back and then place it. And then we're gonna move back to rustic beam two, or I'm sorry, rustic beam three. And as you can see on the end there, I actually already have a rustic beam one. That's what you're gonna put in place to finish this part off. Now we're gonna put in our support walls. This is a very similar pattern to what we did for the pier itself. So this will be beam walls. We're gonna just wanna make sure that these are lined up directly with the support beams above. Now the difference here is the spacing is a little bit different. It's not gonna line up directly. So don't worry like I did here. I remembered, no big deal. If you have a little gap at the end, that's gonna be perfectly fine because we're gonna cover up with beams. Now this part is extremely important. You're gonna to wanna to line up this part center on that beam in the back like I was just showing you. As you can see here, try to get as perfectly lined up with the pier beam behind it. And then as we place the one on the left and right, we're just gonna to wanna to create a one nudge gap. Now the reason for this is to create a spacing that's still gonna work and be even with this front side, even though it's a little bit wider and won't accept four of these beam walls. So your gap should look just like that. That's not a problem at all. Again, those will be covered by our beams. So now we can do the same thing on this side. Just place down two more beam walls. All right, so it's time to set some more dock posts. Same exact techniques we used for the pier itself. We're gonna snap to make sure it's the same height. But this first one, you just wanna make sure it's notched right in the corner there. Now the spacing on these are gonna be a bit different. This first one we're gonna set is gonna be 13 spaces over. The differences here are just because the flooring is a little bit different. Next one is going to be 14 spaces from the middle post. For this front section, the first post you're gonna set, you just wanna make sure it's lined up with the left outer edge of that beam wall. And then from here, the spacing on this next beam is gonna be 16 spaces over. Then we're going to do 14 spaces, followed by another 16 spaces. The reason the spacing is so important here is because when we set our roof on this gazebo, if these spaces aren't followed to a T, it's not going to line up properly. Um, now for this other half here, you're just going to make sure that these posts are spaced the exact same way that you had them on the opposite side. And what you can do to finish this off is just build your posts all the way down to the bottom of the lake. That's going to give it a real nice touch. Um, so make sure you go around and finish all of these posts before you move on to the next part. And at this point, I'm sure you're seeing a common theme here. We're now going back to rustic beam fours. We're gonna do the exact same thing we did with the pier itself by snapping these center on the bottom of the beam walls and just repeat this pattern all the way around until you finish. All right, we're gonna build the posts up a little bit taller for our roof, so we're gonna use umber half walls. These are found in your wall menu that's like kind of towards the bottom with the half walls, but just place these around all of the supports we're gonna leave these front two open for now though. We can finish those or leave them open. It doesn't really matter, it's all personal preference. For the roof, grabbing these rustic stairs, any stair set that's tall you can use. This is gonna help you snap in your roof pieces a little bit easier. So the first ones we're gonna do are going to be, uh, it's the rustic hips. Now you wanna snap these on all four corners of our posts. Now the way that this should look is on the underside, you don't want any part of the actual like brown Lego piece hanging over. You want both of those to be lined up just right. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing on this side. Holding snap sometimes places it right in the right spot, but other times you're gonna have to kind of move it around a bit. Now these ones, we just wanna snap into place and pivot them to where the front corner is lined up perfectly on the outside of the beam. Once all four corners are in, we can move into the Rustic Roof 5, I believe it is. Yeah, Rustic Roof 5. Those are gonna easily fill out the right and left sides. So just snap those into place, and then you'll be ready to move on to the back and front. So we're gonna use the Rustic Roof 5 on both sides here, and then you can fill it in by using Rustic Roof 2 and a Rustic Roof 1. 
Sorry about the night recording here, but this is taking forever, so we're just gonna have to do it. So instead of doing the traditional roof, we're gonna do something a little bit different here. We're gonna grab rustic wide floor two, and we're gonna place that center right up the middle, and we're gonna take a second one and snap that in, and then we'll move into rustic wide floor one, and as you can see here, there's a little one block space on the right and left sides and then two block space around the outer ring. That's perfectly fine. We're going to leave it that way. Now we're going to do rustic floor three and rustic floor one to fill out the gaps here. And now we'll be ready to place down our fencing posts. For our fencing posts, we're mainly going to be using plank railing three. So I'd start by centering it up on the outer edge and then nudging the side ones in one like that. And then once you get to the corner here, you're actually gonna be using rustic plank one. So this plank one, you're gonna drop two of those to finish. And then you can repeat the same patterns on the other side. We'll go back to this plank railing three and then two of the plank railing ones. And then on the opposite end here, we're just gonna grab the plank railing three to finish it off. I know this is a lengthy build and we're almost done. So now we're gonna do our railings on the inside of the gazebo. We can get most of this done again with plank railing three. So you can do two on the side there. And then we're gonna drop these in along the backside. Once you get here again, it's gonna to be too long. So you're gonna to have to move back to plank railing two and then go back to your plank railing three. And then you can just simply attach these or maybe not so simply attach these and finish the entire piece off. This build was pretty technical and was very difficult for me to try to chop up and explain to you all. So I do spend a lot of time and energy so that you all can enjoy these build designs yourself. So if you found value in this, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing because it helps support me continuing to put out tutorials like this for all of you. Thanks again for tuning in. I'll catch you in the next one.